a soft spot for C3s, and Sean Finn here oh, has a cool one I've been seeing for a while. He's actually won at this event before, but uh, Sean, first off, why don't you just tell us that year, make, model, kind of walk us through the car. Uh, 69 Corvette, uh, started out as a street car, had it since I was 15, um, it just slowly evolved year after year after year. Um, always been naturally aspirated. What a power plant got in the car. What's the setup right now? It's a DRCE2 now. Um, it's an old Frank Iaconio block. Uh, got the heads from John Gaydosh. They ran HRA heads, went back and they were carbureted. Um, put a little bit more crank in it. Just tweaked it, built an intake manifold. Um, wanted to do something different for the induction, so we put the big pad on it. Yes, and, I saw uh, that. Yeah, just trying to have fun with it. When I, when I saw that, I thought at first, I was like, man, if you go to a blower, I walked up, I'm like, nope, it's still naturally aspirated. It's still NA. Uh, we did it for the throttle blade area. It's got a lot of throttle blade on it. Um, I think it looks cool. It's a little different, so. It, it's different, and you know, it's not stupid if it works, right? It does work. It, 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 uh, it idles a little high, which is a little bit of a pain. Um, besides that, it does burnouts. You know, you can control the throttle, it works. Um, better than expected, actually. So, yeah. here, uh, now, from what I understand, you've done a lot of the work on this car yourself, correct? Yes, um, we do everything sort of in house. Um, I built the chassis on it. Um, one of my best friends, George Fox from Fox Supercars, he helps me out a lot. Um, awesome chassis guy in Keep One, New Jersey. Um, we do all the engine work. Um, Charlie Weston does the hardcore machine work, the cam and the lifter boards. Um, Tom Slocko did the cylinder heads for me, helped me out with that. Um, we sort of do everything else. Uh, we build them, you know, we build the rears, we build, we changed the gear set in the trans last night. Uh, we try to be as self sufficient as we can. Is that just something that you take pride in, or is it something you just you gotta do to be able to afford to go racing? You know, right? yeah, when you're younger, you don't have any money, and then you see so you're forced to learn it, and then as you get older, it becomes more of a pride thing. And, you know, you wanna do it yourself, and uh, luckily we have the people right, to support so us go. to help us it's, when we uh, mess up, and you know. That's all we do. So, what's the quickest and fastest you've been in the car? Uh, fastest was here a few years ago. We went 772. Um, this is our first run today. We lifted it about five right. and a half seconds Attention in. It went 776. In so, I'm hoping Attention to go 740s this area. weekend. If we can go low 740s, that'd be pretty cool. Um, see through. if it has it in. Uh, that's moving for an A car. Well sure. right the tower. How many cubic Next inches is it? Uh, it's a little over 550. You must have a that, that's an aggressive deal. Line, now, Friday, what's it like trying to Sunday, drive a car like this with, you know, it doesn't exactly have a big wheelbase. Uh, no, this MIR, the they time, do a phenomenal job with the track. It is, um, it's sort today. of easy. When there's no wind, it's sort of, it's sort of just hang up and ride. The car's set up pretty good. We don't really have to, I really don't have to touch the wheel. Now, when the track's right, it's... Sort of easy. Just got to shift. What's your right, ultimate you goal ET wise with this car? Are you tomorrow. trying to coax anything if special out or is it as fast as you can? Uh, we haven't normally set up an eighth mile. So uh, uh, we'd like to be able to go four, you know, deep in the 450s. There. I don't know if it's so there now. In this event, if we can go anywhere in the 730s, it would be a major success for us. I think it's probably going to be in the low 740s. But we'll see. Keep playing with it and changing things to something works. What would it be? You, you know, you, what's it, I guess, like, to you as well, like, better street, question, to win an event like this? Uh, it's awesome. Um, I mean, we won it last time. It was, it was really a technicality. Uh, I don't feel we really earned it as much as we could have. Uh, you cannot come up more yeah, you still went rounds though, which yeah, is not yeah, yeah, easy at this event because this is not a uh, easy field to get into. No, no, no. and yeah. there's a lot of cars. Yeah, it's a marathon. I mean, we won. We we broke the piston in it on Thursday. We ran through tech with no cylinder heads on. I mean, we we hustled for that win. Sons here this week. with us. This was just pretty one. Be cool to win it for him. I love being at the track. We have one car and there is different classes. Life, uh, if they're in different that's why we classes. do this. So, if you're tuning it'd be great to go fast, but I get to hang out with my best friends and uh, my family, car. and that's that's what we go to the hard car man. It's an awesome vehicle. Driver. Thanks for letting us check us out, and we'll see you on the track. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. I'm a sucker for a Viper, so I'm rolling through the pits, and I see Ned Dumphy here with this rad ride. You can't miss it because it is screaming bright orange. Ned, tell us about the car, man. Yeah, this is a 2014 Viper TA. 
which is one of the uh, rare cars that they made back in 14. Only 33 of these in orange. So we decided to make this one extra special and build it out to a badass drag car. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> we are, uh, let's see, five or six years now into going to different versions of this, but big old twin turbo setup on there. Sorry, noisy noisy car. Oh, no, it's all good. The uh, Turbo 400 built by m and uh, Steve Morris built us a nasty motor. So it's a stock V10 casting, but with the steel deck plates in there. Okay. So we're sleeved and firing all that to keep our heads on for the big boost application. Uh, we use a little bit of nitrous to light off the turbos because they're twin 94 precisions. Um, and other than that, getting the gear ratio, tire height, and all that stuff set up is our biggest challenge. But this car is too much power at wheelies and uh, too little. Obviously, we don't get out of the hole because it's 3,700 pounds. But when we get the combo right, she's deadly. Is it still IRS? It's still IRS, too. Nice. Yep. What, why a Viper? So, look around. You're going to see two or three of them here this whole weekend. I love being that guy. And watch, we come up to the start line, even if we're not the fastest car, I bet you the most cameras come up. The orange in particular, right? Camera loves it. And so, while I'm generally a uh, pretty subdued kind of guy, at the events I like to get the most attention and I want all eyes on us when we get to the front. And that it does, like I said, I'm just rolling through. Like a Viper grabs your attention no matter what. Yeah an orange Viper, right. and then it's the fact that you've taken a Viper and you're doing something with it that it, like, it wasn't designed for. No, super short wheelbase, and that's our biggest issue with the wheelies. When this thing's sitting there on the trans brake and we're bumping and banging at night, you'll see the flames out the side pipes, which you'll get on your photo shoot, but big old bullhorns hanging out the side. We're using those to push the nose down, and then a laser to keep us from going onto our lid, because we've had a couple scary moments where it comes up quick. Wheelies are fun for everybody that doesn't have to work on or pay for the car, right? That is right. And <laughs> and it's not the fastest way to go down the track either. No, it is not. Absolutely not. Well, what's it like driving a car like this? Because it's a, it's a interesting wheelbase, interesting power combo. So it don't drive like a typical Fox Body Mustang. No, it does not. So on the trans brake, bump, bump in, let go of the button, and the, the nose just lifts and holds. My steering gets completely light, so we aim ourselves like a bow and arrow straight down the track. And as long as I'm going straight, I stay into it. And then probably 300 feet out, we'll start to touch the front tires back down where I can steer it back to the middle. And then out the back is just a nice smooth pull. So we leave around two and a half G's, and then it'll glide off to about one and a half by the end of the track. Um, but straight as now, which is awesome, and slap the chutes, we're done. So you really got to have the suspension and chassis set up right for this thing, because you're basically a pulling tractor. You're driving with the rear wheels. For the start, absolutely, yeah. And that took a long time, too, to figure out, right, spring compression, uh, the weight. We have a little bit of weight moved around in the car, where we mounted the turbos. We have an air to water tank that rides in the trunk for traction. Big intercooler sitting on the passenger seat floor. So we've moved stuff forward backward four inches, which requires all new fabrication, but we think we got the combo. And then you do roll racing and stuff like this is too well, right? Yeah. So I hate the downtime. I'll do anything in between. <laughs> so like, like, other than the street racing, I just stay away from that. So I'm a roll, I'm a quarter, I'm a streetcar takeover guy. Uh, you know, the, all the um, other events we go to is with Shift Sector. We used to run with the Want to Go Fast events in the half mile. Um, I believe we still hold the record in the half mile for Gen 5 Viper at 230.77. I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but I'm pretty sure this one still holds the record. That's what I was about to ask us. Like, yeah. so how fast does it spin into standing mile stuff? No, never done a standing mile. Oh, so just half mile standing stuff. Standing half mile. So a half mile, you went to 30.77. I've done some standing mile stuff, and that's flying in a half mile. It's awesome. It is awesome. What's that like? So that is now too much power with not enough traction. So if you ever hear the audio on one of those runs, you hear it going, oh, 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 we are Liz traction control all the way down the track until the wing gets enough air that it slams the back down. And you'll see the little, you can see the picture of the mounts back there. We take it off of the drag racing because we can wait transfer at the start on prep. When we go on the dry tracks, like a runway, you need the wing to push the back end down. So we change rear springs, we change rear gear ratios, change the tune up. Like it's a whole different car for the half mile than it is for the quarter mile. So that's like some Buckaroo Banzai kind of stuff. <laughs> some people will get that reference, some will, you know, look it up, kids. Buckaroo Banzai, great B movie, but yet I digress. That's just, yeah. you're in there, you're going to it like, you're going to a different dimension. It's awesome, yeah. But they're huge, like 6,000 feet, right? So yeah. you hit the halfway mark and then you're just coasting and coasting. You need gas to get off the end of the track at the end of it, which is awesome. That's wild yeah. for sure. I, I say, I enjoy this a lot more though. The laser beam, the laser beam, door to door, right? Matched cars, we're sitting next to some other monsters around us who we're running against. The half mile is a lot more relaxed format, but it's a great place to cut your teeth on going fast. Yeah, and it's, and pe I don't think people understand what it takes to do those events because like it takes a lot of horsepower to get to a certain speed and then you gotta make even more horsepower to overcome that and That's keep right. pulling. That's right. You can almost judge a car's horsepower by the mile per hour. You come to the drag strip, there's so much more traction, weight, gearing, etc. Although here, so 210 is our quickest mile per hour in the quarter. And it doesn't translate, right? So we'll pick up 50 or 60 mile an hour from the eighth to the quarter here. But when you go to the half mile with no traction, we go 230s. I feel like it should do seven, 227, and it doesn't go anywhere near. 
So, and this is still a street car? Yeah, so still street legal. Uh, with license plates sitting right in the toolbox right now. We take it off to let the trans cooler breathe. But uh, otherwise, yeah, registered, insured, and uh, 2014 pipe. Take the side pipes off, and away we go. 230 mile an hour no. car that you could go. 65 mile an hour. So, well, 230 mile an hour car that you could go get ice cream in, yeah, essentially. Correct. That's correct. That's and I wild. take it to work on Fridays, coffee on Sundays. Just people are like, you ever drove this over here? I'll go through 10 gallons of gas, but absolutely. You know, it's smiles per gallon, right? Smiles per gallon. Totally. Well, man, it's an awesome car. Thank you so much for taking a look at My it. My pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. One of the coolest things about import versus domestic World Cup is you see some stuff you normally don't see. Amir with Juan Nieves has won. I walked up and I saw this at your car first back here. I can't get in the shot right now, but it was like, it's not a, it's not a Toyota. I see the Mazda badge yep. and it's not your typical Mazda. What is it, man? It's a 1980 Mazda GLC. GLC Mazda. It's out Australia. They call them Mazda 323. Again, it was the, what's the, this is what's funny. You read my mind on this. What's the car everybody thinks people think it everybody is? Everybody thinks it's a Chevette. It's not a Chevette, it's a Mazda. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> and it definitely doesn't run like a Chevette. What engine do you have in the car? I got a rotary engine. What, what, uh, how many, was it ports is it? It's, a, it's only two rotor. Two rotor with a big two turbo, rotor. 91 millimeter Garrett turbo. 91 millimeter turbo. Mm -hmm. So how many liters is the, the the rotary? Normally they say they are not like 90 cubic inch. It's no liter, it's only 1.3 liter motor. So essentially the, the turbo is like literally bigger than the yeah, engine. The, the, yep, the, the turbo is bigger than the motor. That's wild. Now how quick and fast have you been in this car? So far it went 192, best pass all the way 732. 732, and 192. Yep. How big is the wheelbase on this thing? It's only 90. So basically, you're driving a golf cart at almost 200 miles an hour. You have to, you really have to drive this thing down the track. I was gonna say, what's it like trying to drive this thing? It's like a handful, right? You gotta hold on one side of the steering wheel, the other one is stick to it. Yeah, it gets a stick. It, so yeah, it's, it's a five-speed Liberty training on it. You have to cover your head all the time on the stick. So not only are you having to wheel the hell out of this, you're having to make sure that you're banging that shift light as soon as you see it to keep the car happy. That's right, that's right. You gotta get the motor up there. How many RPMs do you scream this thing to? 10.8. It's, it's a handful, it's a handful. And how much does the car weigh? That car with me on it, it weighs 2,400 pounds. It's still all metal. It's on the only thing fire glass on it, just the bumper. But it's still got the dashboard. If you got to look at it, dashboard, radio, it's still got everything in it. And, you know, what's your ultimate goal? Uh, you know, kind of performance-wise. I don't know. We're trying to. You're trying for the sixes, right? Yeah, I didn't want anybody to say it, but yeah, that's our goal. That's our goal this weekend. Six-second golf cart, man. That's wild. Now, why did you decide to build this particular car, man? What's the story behind this it? This car is like I always had one. The first car, one, it was one of it before. It was a street car, completely street, like 24 by 8 tires or nitrous. I used to run 1040s. I crashed it and I said, you know what? I'm going to build something badass. This car used to be nitrous back in the day. I made a turbo and I seen it was going faster. And every time I do a change, it was going faster and faster and faster into what it is right now. But what are people, all the things say, the, t the size tires. I'm only running 28 by 10 and a half dollar tires. Small tires. That's insane for this build. I mean, I, I'm smiling because I'm loving it because yeah. this thing is just, it's so wild. And was it a nitrous rotary engine? It was a nitrous before. I went by the best pass on this body and this one, 9.8. My other car, there was a completely street, 10.40. I didn't even know they made, they used nitrous as a power adder yeah. on a rotary. This thing holds pretty good shot of nitrous. At my, when it was nitrous, I was pushing like 300 shot on it. 300 shot in what, a, a sub two liter engine? Yep. That's wild. What what do you what do you what, what runs the car? What do you see you? Uh, I'm running Microtech ECU, Garrett Turbo, uh, Billet Plates by uh, Billet Inc. And the car performed very very well. And my other one of the, my sponsors again on the UMI part is uh, uh, my Cloud Clutch. I'm running okay. my Cloud Clutches in it. Yeah. And, and what's it you know like to kind of race in this community and race this car because i mean you guys in the import world it's a tight-knit community you know is that really making a lot of fun yeah it is you and i we travel a lot of places and this thing is something to see like everywhere you go see rotary power car they are rigged. But there's i tell people you've got to come to this event for multiple reasons one of which there is no sound in the world like a pissed off rotary 
on the chip, it sounds like it's about to rotate the earth. This thing does sound ridiculous. What's like, it like inside the car when that thing's screaming? It's, it's something out of this world. Like, you can hear that turbo glissing so bad, you think you're gonna Suck, it's gonna suck, it's yeah, it's gonna suck the, the grill and everything, headlights and everything. You'd be like, oh my god, this thing gonna suck, suck and everything in there. You gotta tell small children to stay away from the vehicle when you go to the school test, right? <laughs> yeah. Like a little Billy, don't get near this. Something yeah, bad's about to yep, happen. Yep, it's, it's bad. It's badass. Well, man, it's a badass car. Thank you for your time talking it, about thank it. Thank you, thank you. All right, I'm here with Christina Dodworth, who has a pretty badass GTR. I followed this car before some other articles, so it's cool to actually talk to Christina in person. And these GTRs, I love a fast GTR because they're an interesting ride. And uh, I'm sure Christine can do a test that these are uh, a handful to drive, aren't they? Oh, yeah. So, such a handful. It, All over. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, the, the, the idea that these things just drive themselves, that's not true, is it? Definitely not. You, Definitely have to drive it. <laughs> you're, you're in there earning your keep, right? I do. Definitely have to. Now, how much power does this car make? Do you remember off the top of your head? So, the last time I was on the dyno, I... I 2,500 horsepower. All-wheel drive horsepower? All-wheel drive. <laughs> that, when you when you throw those three, you know, all-wheel drive in front of it, that's what makes it impressive. And that's out of basically kind of some, like, OEM. That's not like full-on billet race car stuff, is it? That's still Nissan-based parts, right? Some of it, yeah, definitely. Engine, 4.3 liter, um, and uh, GR6 transmission, you know. Who built so, the engine? Uh, T1. T1 built the engine, 20, 2,500 horsepower. What's the quickest and fastest you've been with this car? Um, before this horsepower, um, 727 or 198 or 199 mile per hour. Still haven't hit 200, so I'm really hoping to hit 200 at this event. Well, um, so we put an asterisk in front of that because you went that fast. This thing was like, what, 33, 3,400 pounds? It's, uh, now it's probably about 3,400. I think uh, before it used to be thir about 36. 36 you went that fast? 3,600, yeah, because uh, requirements in Water Street last year, I think, had to be 3,600 pounds. So, so you pulled 200 out of it, and that might be the, that might be the magic number, 200 horse, or 200 pounds to hit 200 mile an hour, maybe? I hope so. <laughs> that, and what's it like trying to drive a 2,500, angry 2,500 horsepower down the track at that, you know, almost 200 mile an hour? So. It's pretty a wild ride. You just you feel it, and you're just like, Ooh, and I, I'm pretty sure I have a smile on my face the entire time. How can you not have a smile on your face, right? <laughs> I was like, yay! <laughs> um, but it's, you know, it can be pretty sketchy, you know, at, yeah. at times. But, and we, we talked you know. about that. You're trying to essentially, is it like driving in a boat where you're trying to tell it where you want it to go, and then anticipate well, it, to a certain degree? it wants degree? to do what it, what it wants to do. So if it pulls to the right, you gotta correct it to the left a little bit, but not too much, obviously. Um, you just gotta, what I usually do, if I'm comfortable about staying in it, even though it's going all over the place, I will. If it feels like it's too out of control, I will let off that gas. Oh yeah, you live the fight sure. another day. Yeah. And as a driver, you just, it's something where you know, right? It's like you have that feeling, it's like, all right, this is out of my comfort zone. If, yes. if it goes any further, I'm not going to be able to bring it back. Right, exactly. And again, at that speed a mile an hour, that's that amplifies how much you really have to pay attention driving this car. Oh yeah, definitely. You gotta still pay attention to your surroundings in a way, because you still have to be next somebody, you know? Whether they're behind you, in front of you, or right next to you, you gotta pay attention. It's, you know, when you drive, when you click into that magical nine second barrier and beyond, it changes how you have to react to stuff. It really, really does. Yeah. Especially in, in door, big door cars, because they are gonna react slower and like bigger, if that makes sense. When they okay. want to do something, it's not going to be a, a minor adjustment. When it makes a move, she's going to move big on you, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes she does. <laughs> <laughs> and this is still technically a street car, right? Technically, yes. Um, power steering, air conditioning's out now, but um, still has the radio in it, and you know. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> you, you could drive it on the street if you I want could. to. I just got to put the lights maybe back on the front. <laughs> Do what I did. I just put some golf cart LEDs on the front of my car. I'm oh, like, there you go. You know, they, they weigh nothing. You know, they fit right in. <laughs> What's your favorite part about driving this monster? So, I'm pretty competitive. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, I pretty much, you know, I just like going for it. You know, they know I will go for it. You know, pretty much stay in it. <laughs> 
you, you're you know? gonna you want to win no matter safely at no safely, cost. Safely, yes. Yeah, I'm pretty competitive, but I also just like being with the community, the race community. It's definitely a, a huge plus about it's, racing cars. It's hard to meet bad people at the track, isn't it? Yeah, I haven't really met too many, so. Well, thank you so much for talking to us about the car. It's a beautiful car. We'll see you out on the track soon. All right, thanks. I'm here with Jason Unch, and Jason, your truck got my attention because one, it's red. It's an OBS truck, which I love OBS trucks. And I figure if it's here, it's gotta be fast. For sure. It's getting there. Tell me about the truck, man. What year is it? What drive line setup you got? What's the story on it, man? It's a 91 Chevy full size truck, uh, LS combination, Bullseye 104 turbo, Rossler tranny, Mentor shocks, Pro Torque converter. These guys are so good. Oh, yeah, they're gonna mess with this. I've had the truck a long time, uh, 20 plus years. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, just kind of got to this stage in its life uh, the last year or so. Uh, it's the first year we've had it out in this combination, so it's all kind of new, but it's coming around. What was what's the quickest and fastest spin so far? Uh, last night was the first quarter mile pass I ever made in the truck, and it, we lifted early. It went 6.99 at 186, I think. What's it like going 180 miles an hour in a refrigerator box? Uh, it was different. It was, you know, I had some moments where I wanted to just bail out of it, but we stayed into it and left a little early. But this, today is going to be a different, different day. We're going we're gonna to let it eat. get let after it. Because yeah. it, I was talking to your crew guy, he said you mostly do eighth mile stuff. So going from eighth to quarter in something like this has got to be wild. It's, it doesn't seem like that much further, but it seems like an eternity when you are used to lifting when you see those eighth mile cones. And, you know, staying at that little extra bit was it starts making funny up. noise it starts vibrating yeah. in different ways yeah, it, it was it was different it's, it's fast you know 180 mile an hour in a truck is different yeah de yeah definitely you're taking something that gm engineers are going wait you're about to yeah, do what in the 90s <laughs> yeah yeah in the 90s they didn't even think this thing was going to go over 110 and here you are like we're going to try to go 200 let's see what it does right yeah, that's what we're trying to do today 200 miles an hour in a truck yep. that's going to be wild it will be yep. Looking with, forward to it. With just a little 100 millimeter turbo, right? A little one. Yeah. Now, I'm sure. but what's, you know, the story behind the truck? You said it had it a while. What made you decide to, like, uh, take, you know, your typical OBS truck you'll see is, you know, got this nice stance to it, and then, you know, a little bit rowdy. What made you go, hey, let, let's build a race truck? Uh, buddy of mine, a buddy of mine said, let's pick an LS in it. So we did. We put a turbo on it, and it was, like, the, the beginning of this, you know. It was just, it's fast. And just kept every year, you know, how it goes. I want to go a little faster, a little faster, a little faster, a little faster. Well, here we are. <laughs> What's been your favorite part about building something? Because when you own a vehicle, there's guys that, you know, you, we know guys that flip cars literally, it seems like, every six months. And then you got guys like you, me, and you that have a car for 10, 15, 20 years. What's been the attraction to keep it that long? I just have always liked the truck. It gets a lot of attention anywhere you're at, you know, even here in the lanes, you know, it's one of the only trucks here. So yeah, it's yeah. cool, you know, it's not a cookie cutter car, it's different, so that's what I like about it. And then, like I said, it grabbed my attention, it's one of those things, red, it gets people's attention, you start walking up on it. I mean, you guys have put some really good craftsmanship into this truck, it's, everything's right and where it needs to be. Is that something that you wanted to make sure it was done right the first time and looking right? Yeah, we spent a lot of time on it, there's a lot of people that had their hands on a lot of different companies uh, have all, you know, most of their names on the roof window. Uh, a lot of hands went into this truck. Uh, we made a lot of you know, changes. We did something new, like it changed it, like that. So we put a lot of time into it. And, and it, it's funny, you know, you, you had some struggles with it a little bit earlier. What's it like when you go from having the struggles to that moment where everything comes together? It's unreal. You can't explain it. Uh, you struggle and you can't get it to go. And at one pass, where everything works together and it takes off, and you know it's a good pass. It's just you just want to clap in the car while you're driving it. You know, it's, well, it makes it fun. Do an eighth mile stuff, you know when it's done because yeah. you can see the boards. Yeah, exactly. Quarter mile, it's like it's I, like a game show, right? I had no idea. I was down at the end, and, and my crew came down to help me get everything hooked up, and I was just, you know, another day at the office, and they're like, "Do you not know that you just went a six second pass?" No, no, it's, no, I didn't know. You know. It just felt good. I knew it was fast, but I didn't know it was six seconds back. It's funny with radial cars. You want them to feel. You, you want a radial pass to be like your airplane flight uneventful Correct. and it's usually the ones that feel slow that are fast right exactly the, the, the day before yesterday uh, we just went out for a short little test and i i left it went 
I clicked it off, came back, and I was like, man, something's not right with it. It just didn't seem right. And I don't want 10 cents the best six it's ever gone, but it didn't feel like it. Smooth. And I guarantee if you put this thing on slicks, it'd be a whole different story. You'd be oh, out there yeah, driving like, on slicks. Before, and it's, like, <laughs> it's, like, it's like you're driving a very angry boat, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Well, man, it's an awesome truck. Thank you for taking time to speak with us. Good luck this weekend. Thank you so much.